there. My name is Kelly Dale and I'm owner of Off the Beaded Path which is located in Forest City, North Carolina. For today's video, I want to teach you how to make a brand new pendant that I call the Eden Pendant. I call it the Eden Pendant because as I kind of progressed in my color schemes that I was working with, it reminded me first of a flower and then the more I got to working with it, I kind of blended into browns and then blacks and I thought, wow, this really does kind of my color scheme to me kind of represents the Garden of Eden, how it started out beautiful and perfect and then because of the sin of Adam and Eve, um, you know, that sin was brought into the world and darkness came. So um, that is kind of why I call this pendant the Eden Pendant. I am loving this pendant. Um, it's my new obsession. I promise you it's not going to be like like the carnival obsession though hopefully but um basically for this pendant what you are going to need is you are going to need six four millimeter round beads now these need to be pearls or drop beads okay no fire polish or swarovski like faceted type beads you need 12 eight millimeter round beads Again, this can be any solid round bead, no facets, and it can be a gemstone, it can be a pearl, it can be kind of a glass bead, whatever you want, but it looks best if it's a solid round bead. You need six six millimeter rounds, and again, solid round bead, can be a gemstone, a pearl, whatever you want seven four millimeter bicones. Now, in my opinion, the bicones work best for this project, but if you want to use a four millimeter round, um, like Swarovski or a Thunder Polish bead, you can use that. I would not suggest using a, um, let's see, in place of the bicones, I wouldn't suggest using a fire polish bead. You also need two grams of a size 15 seed bead two yards of six pound fire line and I'm using a size 12 tulip needle. So we'll get all your materials together and then I'll show you the samples and we'll get started with our project. So this is my first sample um, that I did of this pendant. It is lavender and purple colors. This is the front of the pendant and this is what the back looks like. As you can see they're all solid round beads except for my bicones and they do have that different shape shape. But this is what I started out with. And then I progressed to this colorway because I thought, you know, fall's on the way. Let's do some really pretty fall colors. So this has cocoa, um, bronze, and then I've used a copper bicone. And then I made a black and silver version. I really, really like this color scheme on the black and silver. Um, it's very simple and you can wear it with a lot of stuff. So you can kind of see now why I called it the Eden Pendant because of my color scheme that I went with. started out really light and then I got to really dark. Uh, today I'm actually going to do a um, turquoise and bronze colored one. So, to get started, I've got my needle threaded onto my fire line, and I'm going to thread on six of my four millimeter rounds. For my four millimeter rounds today, I'm using a cocoa pearl. So, one, two, three, four, I'm going to bring all six of these pearls down onto the thread and I'm going to leave just a short tail here and from the tail I'm going to come back up through all six of those beads again. I'm going to hold that little tail and I'm going to go ahead and pull this thread through. 
Now, the biggest part thing I see when people bead and they come in to take a class, they pull these threads straight out like this and they're like, oh, it doesn't work. I've got a thread. What have I done wrong? Nothing, because you have to pull the threads the same way that they're coming out of the beads so that it makes your circle and it gets rid of that little extra thread. So now you want to take these two threads and you want to tie the two threads together into some knots. I used to say you want to tie them into good knots and then we had the bead retreat and I caught myself and I said well would I tell somebody to thread a bad knot or to do a bad knot so I'm trying to get out of the habit of saying that but once you put the, the knots in there you will have a circle that looks just like this. You're going to take your needle and go through one four millimeter next to the knot. It doesn't matter if you go to the one to the right or to the left, you're just going through one four millimeter. Whatever direction you start in though is a direction you will have to continue in. Now I'm going to use my little ultra thread zapper and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that tail, that little short tail there so it's out of my way. I'm going to pick up three eight millimeters. I'm using a turquoise just glass round bead. My thread is coming out in an upward motion so I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to come right back through that same bead coming in that upward motion so that when I pull the beads they will make a circle. And I was sure to put in the written directions that when you do this, you're going to see quite a bit of thread between your 8 millimeters, And that's completely okay because we're going to fix that in the next couple of steps. So you've got it into its little circle like this. And the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go down through the 8 millimeter right where your thread is exiting. And I'm going to keep my finger on it as I pull to keep this nice and tight. I'm going to thread on two 8 millimeters, and I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to come to the next 4 millimeter in the circle and I'm going to come back through that 4 millimeter so that I'm working back towards the beads I've already added. I need to get into position to add my next set of beads so I'm going to come down through the bead right where my thread's exiting. through the two new 8 millimeters that I just threaded on. And then through the next 4 millimeter in the circle. Thread on two 8 millimeters. And I'm going to take the needle and go up through the previous 8 millimeter. So I'm going to go right back up through the, eight, the side 8 millimeter. I'm going to continue on through the 4 millimeter. And then the 8 millimeter right below where my thread's exiting, which is just the very next 8 millimeter. I'm going to pick up two 8 millimeters. I'm going to come to the next 4 millimeter in the circle and I'm going to come back through that 4 millimeter so that I'm working back towards my previous beads that I've added. To get into position, I'm going to come down through the 8 millimeter right where my thread is exiting, through the two new 8 millimeters. and then through the four millimeter. I'm gonna pick up two eight millimeters. I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna come back up through the previous eight millimeter. Then I'm gonna come through the four millimeter and then the next eight millimeter so that when you have that step completed this is what your piece will look like so far. 
as you can see, you've got one, two, three, four, five little points, and you need six. So this is where our last bead comes into play. I'm coming out of the side eight millimeter here where I finished. I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to come through the side eight millimeter that I started with. Okay, so this is the beginning, this is the end. So I'm coming out of the end and I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to come through the beginning eight millimeter so that when I do that, it now gives me my point that I need. I'm going to continue on through the four millimeter and then two eight millimeters so that it gets me into place. So I'm going to go through the four millimeter and then two eight millimeters. That's one and then two. So that I'm coming out of an I be darn. My thread just broke. <laughs> okay, well, let me um, fix my thread and get back to where I was at. Okay, so have my thread fixed now and I'm ready to go. And I know somebody's going to do this. They're going to email me and say, hey, why did your thread break? And all I'll simply tell you is please don't because all I'm going to email you back is tell you that I have no clue. So, <laughs> okay, we're ready to move on. Uh, I'm coming out of an outer um, eight millimeter. I'm going to pick up five fifteens, one four millimeter bicone, and let me double check my pattern. Um, three fifteens. Right now, my thread is exiting at this eight millimeter. I'm going to come to the four millimeter right below it, and I'm going to come through that bead so that when I pull, it will lay on top just like this. I'm going to pick up three fifteens, and I'm going to come back through the four millimeter that I just added to that four millimeter bicone. And then I'm going to pick up five fifteens. And I'm going to come back through the eight millimeter so that there are fifteens on each side of that bead. So that when you pull, it kind of makes like an X shape above the beads. And that's exactly what you want. I'm going to pick up one six millimeter. And I'm going to go through the next outer eight millimeter. And pull that. Wow, I am just a hot mess today with this stuff. So that now I have my six millimeter in place and I'm ready to add my next embellishment. So again, the embellishments are five fifteens, one four millimeter bicone, and three fifteens. I'm going to come to the four millimeter in the center and I'm going to come through that bead and if you go through like my needle I can't get my needle through without going through that little 15 right there I'm going to go ahead and pull the thread and then just back out of that size 15 seed bead there we go all right, so now it's three fifteens, and I'm going to go through the four millimeter bicone, and then five fifteens, and go back through the eight millimeter so that when you pull, it makes that next little X shape. Pick up one six millimeter round and go through the next eight millimeter round here along the outer edge. And you are gonna continue adding your embellishments. You've got one, two, three, four more sets of embellishments to add with the little six millimeters in between them. This is what your pendant should look like when you're all the way around. I'm exiting out of an eight millimeter bead. It doesn't matter which one you exit on the outer edge. You just wanna exit an eight millimeter. You're gonna pick up 12 15 size 15 seed beads 
come back through the same 8 millimeter that you're exiting so that when you pull the thread, your beads will wrap around it. Now here's one thing that I did a little bit different from my pattern. I basically finished the whole thing in the pattern and said, you know, go back and reinforce your beads. But if you want to, what you can go ahead and do, and I wouldn't skip the reinforcement step because it really does help these beads stay where they need to stay. Um, go ahead and go back through the 12 size 15 seed beads again while you're at them. So I'm going through all 12 again. And then through the 8 millimeter again. And then I'm going to continue on through the 6 millimeter and the next 8 millimeter. And I'm going to go around the whole pendant, adding 12 size 15 seed beads only around those 8 millimeters. And I'm going to reinforce them at the same time. Once I'm finished with that outside, I'm going to stitch through my beads to exit out of any one of these center 4 millimeter beads. Once you've beads. gone all the way around the pendant, adding your embellishments, this is what your pendant will look like. I've stitched through the beads to exit out of a 4 millimeter here in the center of the circle. I've threaded on two 15s, one 4 millimeter, and two 15s. I'm going to come to the 4 millimeter opposite of where my thread is exiting and I'm going to go through that 4 millimeter. And you just want to go through the 4 millimeter. So when you pull, your beads will lay like this. Pick up two 15s and come back up through the 4 millimeter bicone that you just added. And then you want two more 15s. And with these two 15s, you're going to come back through that top 4 millimeter so that once you get it pulled through, you'll have an X shape right over the center of your circle. Now, one thing you might want to consider is putting a Monty in place of that bicone because that would be really pretty to have that Monty there. But once you have this completed, you actually have the pendant finished. So you can take this thread, cut, uh, tie it off with a couple of half hitch knots. If you don't know how to do that, go back to uh, my Must Know Monday a couple weeks ago where I show you how to do that. And then I'm going to show you actually how to attach it so to I the necklace. So I have the thread tied off and I have the completed pendant and I'm ready to make it into a necklace. So to do that, I'm going to be using three twisted 6mm jump rings, one uh, lobster claw, and then I have about 16 inches of this really neat aluminum chain. I'm really into the aluminum chain right now that we carry because it's very lightweight. You don't have to worry about it turning. And the other great thing is it's rather inexpensive. Um, we sell it a dollar fifty a foot, so it's really, really fun. And this is the other color that I'm obsessed with right now. I'm just loving that kind of antique copper, antique bronze looking color. So, to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two pairs of pliers to open, twist open my jumper ring. And I want to make sure that whatever I do, this bead right here in the center is straight up and down. So I'm going to add my jump ring under this loop right here. So I'm going to take my round nose pliers and just kind of stick it under there to get that little arch that I need. And then I'm going to take my jump ring and I'm going to wiggle it in to where I just made that opening. I'm going to take the two ends of my chain and I'm going to hold them with my needle here. I'm going to do this real technical like. And I'm going to put the two ends together and find the very center. So right here is the very center link on my chain. You can do this in a more technical way. I'm just not that kind of person. And I'm going to grab a hold of my jump ring. Yep. 
I can do that. There we go. I'm going to attach it to that. I'm going to attach it. I tell you guys, I'm not doing good today. I started back to yoga this morning. Our yoga class took a a, a summer, a month long summer vacation type thing. And man, I started back today and I'm just all thumbs. So I'm going to close that jump ring. Make sure you get it good and closed there at the top. So that when you open it. Now you have the chain attached to the pendant. And then all you have to do at this point is open one jump ring. And attach it to the very end link of your chain. And I'm going to go ahead and thread on my lobster claw. And close this link. And then I'm going to open the other link of chain. Or the other um, jump ring, I should say. And I'm going to attach it to the very end link of chain. And then make sure that you get the jump ring closed. Here we go. So that now those two ends will attach and you have your completed pendant. So I hope you guys enjoyed my newest creation, the Eden Pendant. Be sure and come back next week when I'm going to teach you how to make the Eden ring and then who knows after that. But we will have all four color samples available on our website, which is off the beadedpathbeadstore.com. And we'll also have um, the pattern, the written pattern for sale at our website, off the beadedpathbeadstore.com. And when you go there, if you haven't got it yet, be sure and pick up a copy of my new book, Beading with Monty's, which again can be found at off the beadedpathbeadstore.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next week. Week. Have a good one. Bye-bye.